Hello children, welcome back to a session with me. I'm your host Abdul Rahman and uh, today we'll be discussing 2019 O-Level paper. 2019 O-Level paper has been much simpler or compared to the previous years easier than as it had been before, right? So let us start with a very simple casual meetup where we will be discussing about what the all-over paper is. The all-over paper has two parts, right? That being part one and as you already know part two, right? Now if you take the two parts, specifically part one and part two, part one has eight questions, right? Or you can say they are Tits, as they say there are eight questions or eight activities in this case and each questions have a mark of five so if you can get five marks in a question in part one that means in total you will be getting 40 marks now each of these question deals with a particular skill so, question number one, for example, deals with reading, two with vocabulary, and so on. So, without further ado, let us go straight into the work and see how these things are carried out. Okay. Now, this is a sample that I obtained from eTaksala website. You can go to their website, which is the government website. And it's completely free, my dear children, which you might already know by now, and download the paper from there itself. Now you can see in this paper you have 8.30 to 9.30. What, what does it mean? It means you have only one hour to complete part one, right? And you should have to write your index number in this column. To be honest, in this box, right? So you write the index number there and then you continue with the work. Now let us go to test number one. Test number one says for you to match the following notices. Match, what, what, what do you mean when you say match? Match may be to take a line and draw lines. That is also matching. Or matching two things simply might mean to connect the dots. In this case, matching means what? Let us see what they mean by matching. Match the following notices with the places given below. Write the letter of the most suitable notice in the given box. The first one is done for you. So usually my dear children, in a particular test, the last line, the last line indicates an activity. What do I mean when I say it indicates an activity? It means that it is in an italic or italicized font. The first one is done for you means they have already shown you how to complete the activity. For example, you have several notices, handle with care, preference only, take off your shoes, reserved for pregnant mothers, caution may network and no bathing, rough sea. Now let me go into a different approach. If you take handle with care, it means there are something inside the box, essentially where you should be very careful. You can see this in your refrigerator box. You can see this notice on your washing machine box, right? The box that it came in or the packaging. And you also can see it in the box, those boxes which contain glasses. So you can see on a box full of glassware, it says handle with care. Now what about this? Reference only. Reference only deals with the library. Now if you go to the library, my dear children, you might have gone to the public library in your place. The public library might have several sections. The public library might have several sections, right? There can be sections where there are regular books. Regular books are books you can find anywhere in any bookstore and stuff like that. 
at the same time there can be some rare books rare books are very old sometimes and it is only in a limited number now you also might have some very large and rare books in your library at your school you cannot borrow them to take home you cannot borrow these books right so that is one particular special feature you cannot borrow to take home no borrowing i'll put an x here but what can you do or what you can do is in this case you can refer to them you can only refer to them I'm sorry so if you have something only for reference can you take it out of the library no you can't it is actually against the law it is illegal and it is unethical as well so you should be very careful when handling books that are only for reference so please take that into consideration okay so reference only is to do with your library so take off your shoes so take off your shoes means when you go into go to the beach also sometimes you take off your shoes so that you can play but is it the most suitable answer no the most suitable answer is at a temple now remember my dear children you can argue on a beach sometimes you take off your shoes and go and play on the beach it's completely all right but did you read the question first it says most suitable when you say most suitable it should be most appropriate so remember that as well so in this case it means on a beach is not suitable but rather at a temple so most of you my dear children i believe you go to your religious places it can be a temple or a church or a kovil or a masjid in this case so wherever you go when you go into the religious place as a mark of cleanliness and respect as a mark of cleanliness and respect what do you do i'll write it so you can remember it as a mark of respect and uh, cleanliness you will take off your footwear so footwear means actually it can be slippers or it can be sandals or it may be even shoes in this case right so whatever the stuff that you have you can take that out as a mark of respect right now the next one reserved for pregnant mothers if you go in a public transport system such as a bus or a train you will see there are several notices there which indicate some of the seats are reserved for example can you remember this i'll write it here uh reserved for clergy reserved for clergy so reserved for clergy means what who can sit here the people who can sit here are or is it reserved for people who are in their top order in a religion it can be a father or it can be a hindu priest or it can be a muslim priest or it can be a buddhist monk whatever the reason he will be the people or he will be the person who can get this idea and there are some other places also which says reserve for differently differently able so my dear children the reason i am typing these things is it is possible that instead of saying one word you might get something else so differently able means people who might have some disability sometimes this ability such as what a broken leg or they might come with a broken hand or they might have difficulty to walk these type of people and there are also seats which is reserved for pregnant mothers so if you travel by buses or trains or stuff like that you will be able to see that so in a bus you can say reserved for pregnant mothers similarly if you take caution men at work 
So when you say caution men at work, it means that you have to be careful. Don't rush into that place, it's quite dangerous. So be careful, caution men at work. It is to do with a building site. And finally, if the sea is rough, you should not bathe in that area. Nowadays, if you watch the news, you will be able to see that there is a particular cyclone that is affecting our area. So they advise you not to go and bathe in the sea, right? So rough sea means you cannot bathe, it's very dangerous to bathe. You may die in some cases. So how will you write the answers? You don't write here, you don't have space to write. For example, at a building site, you know the answer is caution bath at work. But can you write the full answer here? No, you can't. So what will you do? Specifically, what can you do? You will write, yes, you will write only the letter. For example, here you will write E. And then you can write F, then D, then C and B. But remember, it is all in simple letters. So you have to write in simple letters as well. So that was test number one, children. The idea or the technique was matching and the text type, it was some short notices. And we find whether you can extract the necessary information from the various type of text. Now here, what is the technique here? You just have to fill in the blanks, right? So gap filling is the technique here. So in this particular stuff, where a dialogue is given, a dialogue is usually a conversation between two people. Okay, so I'll write that here as well, my dear children. A dialogue, what is it? A conversation, usually between two people. What about a monologue then? A monologue, as you know, mono means one is a conversation or conversation I'm sorry between is it two people no it's just between the same person so the if the person is conversing with himself I'll write between himself even though you know what I mean by this it is what we call as a monologue in this case you are given a dialogue so with the dialogue given to you you are expected to fill in these blanks. So, what can you do? So, the competency that we are expecting from you is, we are expecting whether you can build up your vocabulary and convey the correct meaning. So, can you speak properly and convey the correct meaning? Well, if you are, good luck, which means you have scored the full marks. So, we can assess the ability of you by if you can understand and use the nouns and verbs properly, right? Let's go straight into the work now. Now, there are two people here. Who are they? Rashmi and Ajani. Or you can say Ajani, Ajanai, Rashmai, whatever the reason that you want to speak to, it doesn't matter. But anyway, fill in the blanks with in the following dialogue. Use the words given in the box. Please remember that. Some of you, my dear children, I have seen when you write, you do not consider these words. You write your own words, which is quite good. I'm very happy about the thing that you do. But remember, if you would like to score marks for this activity, you have to follow the instructions. And they tell you, write the letter of the correct word in the space given. They have given you the space and they tell you, write the correct letter. Please do that. Do not write the word there. Why do you, why, or why are you asked to write the word? Did you think about that, my dear children? Why you are asked to write the word? Now let us go through this particular activity, right? Then you might get the idea. Now one girl says, Wow, what a lovely photograph. In this case, lovely is an adverb. Or is it an adjective? It is something for you to think through, right? Is this your family? Yes, it was taken at my sister's wedding. Who do you think is sitting next to me? Who do you think is sitting next to me? So you can write the word think here, T-H-I-N-K. Or you can write the letter E. But remember my dear children, 
if you think or if you insist that you will write the word the word must have the correct spelling but if you write the letter the letter is only one letter right so e is always an e you never make mistakes in that if you get a it is a you know how to write a since grade 1 or grade 3 or kindergarten or since when you have learned your spellings but remember if you think that you should write the letter is much better but rather if you prefer to write the word for example the word given is fox f r o c k s suppose but you know the answer but instead of writing fox you have written f r o c k frock that means you won't get marks my dear children please remember that okay let's go through hmm it must be your what is this number 3 it must be your twin sister twin t w i n twin sister so what do you mean when you say twin i'll write the word separately here so that we can go through what twin is twin twin means something with the same property for example you might have seen two people who look same or look alike i can write look alike and do they only look alike no they do things alike they do things alike at the same time they appear alike and these things of uh, or these uh, kind of properties make them twins in terms of english not in terms of science so please remember that as well so when you speak about these things remember twins means or twins are people who are usually related and they may be siblings so when you say siblings siblings can have several meanings it may be a brother and a sister we call them as siblings as well or it can be two brothers or it may be two sisters all these things mean sibling right so a brother and a sister two brothers and sisters so in this case you will understand twins are two people first of all and they have similar features what about three people who have similar features what do you call them if it is three you call them as triplets t r i p trip l e t s trip triplets right let's come back right two of you look the same see they are giving you the answer here if you don't know what the answer here is you can read through and you'll find two of you look the same so if you look the same it means you are a twin and you both are wearing what what does it means you both are wearing frocks can you say shirt no why there are two or three reasons the first reason is they are speaking about something plural so it should be frocks two people can't wear a shirt logically isn't it so it should be something plural so you can say frocks is the boy wearing the red but what is the word here shirt your elder brother so what is the opposite of elder it is younger now my dear children let's go through a very quick and easy grammar part here so that it will uh, polish your english as well we are going to speak about speak about adjectives 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 right so in adjectives you have three types you have the normal adjective with you then you also have comparatives comparative adjective uh, i'm sorry so this is o m p right comparative adjective and then you have superlative adjective you have comparative adjective at the same time you have superlative adjective now for example if i say tall the comparative form of tall is taller the additionally i use the word er okay and then if you take the next word it is the tallest for example i can say like this i can say um i'll give you a practical example i can say the zebra is tall because i am speaking about one particular animal 
one particular subject i can say the zebra is tall this tall refers to this zebra okay now let's see that i'm looking at a zebra at the same time i'm looking at a camel and i want to say that camel is a little bit more tall than zebra i'm i'm being very naive here so i can say the camel is taller than the zebra so what am i doing here i am actually comparing i am actually comparing here right you see the zebra is tall the camel is taller than the zebra now of all the animals in the animal kingdom i am going to say there is a particular animal which is very 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 tall maximum tall you can say the giraffe or giraffe if you prefer is the tallest the giraffe is the tallest in this case you can see i am using the word tallest and can you see that in none of these two words i did not use the article the but in the third place i am using the article the so we call this as this adjective and this is known as a comparative adjective because you are comparing between two things and this is superlative that means it is the super boss the ultimate of all the stuff that is given to you okay my dear children let's come back to the lesson now look no he is the youngest see he, they are using the superlative form of young that means out of all the brothers and sisters out of all the siblings this particular person is the youngest but he is very tall he is very tall see they are speaking about what i spoke earlier your father and mother still look very young don't they of course thank you for the compliment now my dear children on another note what do you mean thank you for the compliment if somebody is giving you something you can thank them right for example they are giving you a chocolate or an apple or a banana you can say thank you very much but if somebody is telling wow you look very beautiful or you can they are saying wow you have a beautiful set of teeth excuse me or they say that you have a beautiful book with you or they say oh you look very young today so these things are compliments for your appearance or if somebody says you have um, congratulations on getting the highest marks for english congratulations on passing the exams or they say that you have done a very good essay or you have written a very good essay so these things they don't give you physically they use their words so when they use their words they are actually complimenting you so please remember to thank them for the compliment that is quite a good habit let us go to test number 3 now test number 3 my dear children is a skill of gap filling as you already know about this activity you are given a picture or an illustration and you should be able to extract the information from various type of text in this case a picture so we see that whether you can identify the words whether you can identify the actions when you can you read the picture so after reading the picture can you fill in the blanks this is what we are focusing on this particular activity so in this activity my dear children you can see this picture or this illustration there are two boys right and then you can see there is a hat an umbrella there are two pairs of trousers one shirt there are curtains there are three books then there is a table lamp there is a table and there are three drawers <coughs> and there's a floor mat there's a shoe rack and there are two pairs of shoes these are all objects but at the same time you can see in relation to the position how they are described so when you want to describe something using a position we can use pre positions right you don't say pre positions but i would like i like to say it as pre positions because it sounds quite good that's the only reason right control u control b and and back right 
you might have studied about three different types of prepositions the first one being the preposition which is related to the place for example a boy is on the chair the cat is in the box <coughs> we call this as this on and this in we call this as prepositions of place because they describe the relative place of objects now we can go into the next step which is preposition of movement or phrase of movement for example i am going to the door he is walking around the bush right so in this case the word through and the word around both of them is to do with movement right and finally i'll speak about the phrase of time for example it is monday or I'll, i can say like this can you come on monday it is at 4 pm so in this case this particular word on and at both of them deals with the position of time now my dear children you can remember or you can go through there are three first one being place and the second one being movement and the third one being time when describing the picture you will be speaking about the preposition of or the phrase of place for example a table lamp is on the desk you can say an umbrella is hanging from the wall there are two pairs of trousers in the cupboard or hanging from the cupboard isn't it so a shoe rack is beside the children whatever let's go through the activity this picture shows chatura's room so we are speaking about the room of chatura we are going to discuss it now i am going to start it off like this like this in the sense i am not going to read the answers as e a b c but rather i am going to read the proper answer which means for example if it is wall i will say it is wall if it is trousers i'll say it is trousers i won't say it's a b c or something like that but rather i'll go into the different mode now my dear children how can you go through this when you are writing the answers remember as i told earlier read the question every year it doesn't matter even if you have memorized the question just read it it says write the letter of the correct word in the blank <clears throat> why do they give you this option they give you this option my dear children to make it much easier for you and they also do an example the first one is done for you suppose you would like to write the word cupboard that is your focus you are going to write cupboard but do you have enough space to write cupboard in this particular blank for example let's say the answer to number 5 is a pile of books okay and let's suppose that you have quite a bigger handwriting can you write books here yes you can write books there you can write books there it doesn't matter but if you take for example for umbrella so umbrella comes somewhere here there is a cap and an umbrella but can you write umbrella here no you can start you here it will go on and on and on and it will go above also so it looks a bit like a jargon so please remember to write what they have given you right let's go through and let's start first one his what is it friend 
Isuru is sitting near him on his what is it bed so you don't write b e d bed here but rather we'll write the particular letter for bed which is a there is a with three now you can say there is a with three in the room so what is there with three you can say there is a now you can see in this place there is a cupboard with three clothes so can you say clothes here no you can say trousers and shirts if you look at this box also you can see they have given the word trousers so you can't take this if you take the shoe rack there are two pairs of shoes not three so you can't take that as well but if you take the table this table has three drawers right or drawers so you can take this particular one so it says there is a table or in this case specifically what is it f with three drawers or h in the room a pile of something and the something he uses to study can be seen here now the key word here is study so in this room what can you use to study can you use your shoes to study my dear children no you can't use your shoes to study and it is not good to use shoes to study sometimes i have listened i have heard that some teachers they use shoes to study what does it mean they actually beat the child so it's quite not good can he use the umbrella to study no you can't write with an umbrella it's not going to work but maybe if you have seen the movie kingsman you can shoot with an umbrella but it's not an umbrella actually but anyway let's come back if you take this particular table it has a table lamp at the same time it has books so books are the best companion as you know so we use them to study so you can see a pile of books so a pile of is a collective noun so you can say when you speak about collective nouns my dear children you can say a pile of books what else is in a pile a pile of clothes a pile of clothes is it arranged no it's just there it is just there which means that you take the clothes and put it everything into one roll it up and you can call it as a pile if the books are arranged in order you can say a stack of books stack of books means they are arranged they are arranged well right so in this method you can understand different type of collective nouns so a collective noun in this case here you get a pile of a stack of this speak about collectivity you can say bottles of water you can say five bottles of water or you can say some cartons of milk isn't it for example if you are drinking tea and you are drinking with high sugar let's say that you like to have high sugar you can say mother i need to have which means you need to have three spoonfuls of sugar right you can say like that it's, it doesn't matter you can say three spoonfuls of sugar now my dear children something else that i would like to stress in this case is your knowledge in um collective nouns also come in handy in this case right let's come back the of the window are partly open what of the window are partly open can you look the curtains because look and you can look at this curtains they are not fully open they are partly it's not half it's not full but somewhere in the middle so partly open means the curtain is not fully open but rather somewhere between half and full in the something he has hung a shirt and two pairs of something now you can see the shirt is in the cupboard so you can say in the cupboard c u p b o a r d i have seen students writing cupboard as 
C O B B B O O R D. That is not cupboard. It should be pronounced as cupboard, but when you write, it's written it as two words, coined into one. Cup board. Cup board. I teach my children to look at cupboard or remember cupboard like this when you want to write. If you have problems in memorizing cupboard, just remember you take a board and make a cup. So if you take a board and make a cup, it looks like a cup board or a cupboard. You can remember like that as well. It doesn't matter, my dear children. Okay, and uh, let's continue. He has hung a shirt. Now the grammar point here has hung. He has hung a shirt. Why don't I write it? I'm writing he has hung a shirt. Now this particular line here has hung a shirt. What tense is it? Now I am asking you in the point of grammar. Now you can say they are speaking about present tense. So you can say it's present. One of the best ways to understand present tense is this particular word, which is has. You know that has have both of them represent present tense. Is it only present? No. There is also a past participle verb here. So because of that, you can say it is perfect. So this has has given the meaning present. Hung has given the meaning perfect. So let this be a small snippet in grammar for you as well. He has hung a shirt. So it what does it mean when it when you say he has hung a shirt? The shirt is already there. He has done it. Will he remove it? Yes, he will remove it. Will he put it there? Yes, he will put it there. It is up to him, right? Okay, let's come back. He has hung a shirt and two pairs of trousers. Now, my dear children, you know that a pile of is a collective noun. Two pairs of is also a collective noun. Now, there is a cap and an. An is an article. This article an is used before a noun that has a vowel letter. And more specifically, vowel sound. If you have the vowel sound, for example, when you say umbrella, that has the sound a. Uh. Now, just go through this, my dear children. There are basically three the articles. If you take the articles in English, I'm going to go through this article lesson as well. Articles in English. There are three articles. What are they? The first one is a. Uh, then you have and then you have the a uh is used with the sounds or the letters that has or the sounds of consonants consonant means everything except the vowels a e i o u these are the vowel letters right you should know this and i think i hope that you know this letter right so with these letters or with these sounds, we use and. For example, look at this word. The word you need for. You never say an uniform. Why? Because how do you pronounce it? You pronounce it as like this. You need form. So when you say you need form, the first letter is Y. So you will not say an uniform. You will say a uniform. Now, if you take the word our, H O U R, the word H is silent. So, how will you pronounce it? A V. So, this is a vowel sound. So, you can say an hour. And particularly, the is used with some words such as musical instrument. For example, I like to play the violin. I like to play the violin but you can't say I like to play the football because with sports you don't use articles my favorite game is the cricket I live in the Sri Lanka you don't say that so remember when to use articles this is one of the most basic lessons in English so remember this as well my dear children right there is a cap and uh, an umbrella on the hangers to the wall there are two pairs of shoes on the shoe rack you can see 
there are two pairs there is a black pair and there is also a white pair one is white and the other is black chatura keeps his room neat and tidy you can see his room is neat and also tidy as well so neat and tidy they are like the same size of the coin so usually something which is neat should also be tidy so it is like a clause right so you might have studied conditional clause so you can say if the room is neat it also may be tidy tidy means orderly arranged right okay my dear children let's go to test number four and the final discussion for today test number four as you can see my dear children is a grammar activity we are testing your grammar and uh, language functions so what you do is is very good and i think that you know what to do you have to do a bit of editing which means you find the wrong word and you put the correct word there that is what you all have to do you are given a passage and you you have to use the english grammar for the purpose of effective and accurate communication so we assess if you can write correct answers or correct sentences okay the grade 9 students of our school have planned so why is it wrong have planned because when you say our school it is singular is it no it's not that they have told you one is done for you so you don't have to worry about how planned no don't worry about that they tell you that it is not how planned it is had planned the reason why it has become had planned is because of this particular word which is yesterday so when you want to speak about something that happened yesterday you can say had planned so everyone were present in time what is wrong there when you want to speak about everyone you don't say were you will say was w a s so remember when you want to say about everyone you can say was everyone was present that's what you say isn't it however just before a match now my dear children you might be wondering why a uh, is wrong because there's no problem here right i just told you about the articles now my dear children one particular use of the is because it is a definite article in other words it means that you are speaking about a cricket match so this match and this match or in other word this cricket match and the match that you are speaking right now are the same so you don't say i come to al-arafa muslim vidyalaya my school is al-arafa muslim vidyalaya al-arafa muslim vidyalaya is there you don't always use the same but what you will use you will use the school the school the school similarly when you want to speak about your friend let's say that your friend is <coughs> i'll say my name abdul rahman you don't say abdul rahman is a good boy abdul rahman did that abdul rahman did this what you will say you will replace the word abdul rahman to a proper noun no to a pronoun isn't it so you can say he did this he did that similarly when you speak about the match here you can say the match just before the match or you can say just before this match or as it is yesterday you can say just before that match it started raining they waited at least of two hours no no you know this word they waited at least for two hours but the rain did not stopped is it correct no why is it wrong the reason it is wrong my dear children is if you take this sentence the rain did not stop i'm going to write that down the rain did not stop now you can see my dear children when you say the rain did not stop did not indicates it is already in past tense so you don't have to write ed again because when you say did not it is in present simple is it no it is in past simple it is in past simple and what is the form is it positive or negative it is in negative form right so it is not telling about something affirmative said i'll, I'll write negative here negative means no 
it says negative and in this case as you already indicate did not using the past simple the negative format do not say stopped so let's go through something else you can say i do not play if you say i do not played that is wrong she did not listen so look at this what am i doing using the word did and do i'm changing the answers for example i can write she listens look at this answer she listens she does listen both of these are exactly the same which means this is also present simple this is also present simple there is no change but but my dear children because of using does the word do here this s is cancelled out and it is replaced here so take this into mind as we are doing a seminar type of activity let's go fast they were very sadly no you can't say they were very sad you can say they were very sad they were very sad at the end so i can't you say they were very sadly because sad is an adjective sadly is an adverb you are speaking or describing them so them or they in this case is a noun if you would like to describe a noun you should use an adjective if you would like to describe a word i'm sorry verb you will use an adverb for example look at this sad sadly i can write like this i am sad which means i am not happy i am uh let's say i am singing sadly so what is the difference between i am sad and i am singing sadly this particular sad means that i am sad which means it's a noun <coughs> when you say singing sadly it means i am describing my activity which is i am singing sadly at the end they decided to play cricket on the following day so my dear children as you have gone through the activities which are activity number 1 2 3 4 of 2019 i hope to continue the rest in another session thank you for joining me in this session if you like to view more videos you can always look through my playlist and my videos given here on winhars academy at the same time do not forget to like subscribe and share our videos with others so that they might benefit i hope to see you once again in another video similarly and very soon thank you for being with us have a good day and wish you all the best in your examinations